so I have two units now to be able to aerate the yards I take care of professionally with my lawn care company. So I've got the standalone Toro stand-on aerator, and then I've got the aerating attachment for the Toro Grandstand Multiforce. Now this is all an accumulative thing. Uh, back when in 2016 when the Toro stand-on, the 30 inch wide stand-on aerator came out, I demoed it uh, and I, I loved it as a game changer from all the walk-behind aerators I used to use all the time. And as a solo owner operator, you really need to kind of, in my mind anyway, I would try to be as efficient as possible. How can I get the most done by myself so I can make the most money, be the most profitable, and not beat myself up along the way? So I got the 30 inch stand on aerator. Now, this is the 24 inch. It's a lot more narrow and smaller. Now, that's going to allow you to get into all the gates. So, 36 inch small gate um, or up, obviously. It's gonna get you in all those small gates. And, and I have a lot of gates, a lot of backyards. They're smaller, so I wanted to have one unit that would do everything. So I sold my 30 inch, because the 24 inch didn't exist in 2016 when I bought the 30 inch. This came out a couple years later, I guess. So they had both the 30 or the 24. So I figured I would just get this. So I was able to sell the 30 inch to a local company that just specializes in turf treatments, fertilization, weed control, aerating and seeding, all that. So they bought the 30 inch because they clearly will use it. Um, and along with all their walk behind aerators. And then I bought this. Uh, so I still had to pay a little bit for this because it wasn't a clean slate because the 30 inch was used, but it was not used a lot. And I was the only one that used it as the owner operator. So uh, I still got a good value for it. Owed a couple, like a little bit, I think maybe a couple thousand more to get this. No big deal, swapped it out. Now I have just one dedicated unit for aerating. But this, so Toro acquired uh, a company that sells a lot of attachments for mowers called JRCO, and Jericho for, you know, lack of a better way to pronounce that. Most people call it Jericho, but they make a ton of different attachments for your mowers. And when Toro, you know, has the, the multi-force system here with the hydraulics, you can just attach anything in there. They have Toro Camp with their own attachments, like the, the broom attachment, the blower attachment that I have. And they just keep coming out with more and more attachments for that uh, to put in there. And it's got the hydraulics on the side to activate that. And then you can get high flow hydraulics. You see the mount there, which would uh, power the broom to spin. And this, you get the snow blower attachment to spin that, to shoot the snow out. So there's a lot of options. They also acquire Jericho so that they can now expand the attachments because they didn't the toro didn't make their own aerator attachment so they now have these attachments and they have a dethatcher which i also have attachment a leaf plow attachment just many different attachments that jericho makes and toro makes so now they've just pretty much doubled the size of of options for you to attach so since i had the toro multi-force i wanted to get this attachment aerator and give it a shot i will say the differences here is this is a scoop so this comes these come down in here and dig into the ground and scoop it out and leaves leave little pieces of soil around versus the cores the plugs that this leaves because it's a core aerator so it's hollow tines so it pushes the dirt cores out and leaves them all over and they break down eventually but they're a little more unsightly and it takes a lot longer for it to break down where this scoops out pieces that are a lot easier to break down and, and you don't notice them as much in the lawn. I'll show you guys the differences between the two and that's the whole point of this video. So I don't think either one is better. I think they're both for different applications. You're obviously gonna be able to go faster on this one because you're already using a mower that you have, a mower that goes, I don't remember what it is, like 12, 13 miles an hour or something crazy like that versus this. I have no idea what the miles per hour is. I didn't check the manual before I made this video. I just know it's a lot slower than a mower which is fine, um, it is what it is, everything has their purpose, but some aerators, I know other brands make them a little bit faster and so on, but the bottom line is, you're not really gonna get any faster than you know a Grandstand Multiforce you know, mower like this. These things are beasts and they go super fast, so if you put this aerating attachment on here, now you can go just as fast, faster than that to aerate. Plus, this is wider, this is actually wider than the 30 inch that I used to have. This is 24 inch wide of tines underneath there, which is pretty narrow. So you gotta do a lot more passes to get that, to get a yard taken care of. But again, the benefits is you can get in the small backyards. This one is 40 inches between from this all the way to here. So you have a 40 inch pass now. So you have a lot less passes. So that's even more than the 30 inch 
that I used to have, like I just said. So you get wider passes now, so you can cover ground a lot faster. You, you cover a lot less ground is what I mean. Um, and the speed increase over that. So overall, this is super productive from a speed and less passes standpoint. Now it's just a different type of aerating, like I said. So um, these all spin independently here. So when you're turning, you know, they, they turn kind of like your caster wheels there and your tire, they turn together as you're going around curves and all that. So you don't have to like stop and lift them or anything like that. Only when you're backing up, if you have to actually reverse to change positions or whatever, you lift it up like this. And obviously if you need to transport, you know, off into the driveway to your trailer or whatever, same thing. You lift this up, you get on the trailer and then you lower it back down. So I had this up so you guys can see it, see these clearly and they can spin and all that. But when you're parked, you're supposed to lower this down so it takes the pressure off of this whole mount system kind of like a plow on a truck you always see guys the plow when they're parked the plow is resting on the ground to keep the pressure off of everything the truck the mounts the hydraulics all that so pros and cons i think to both i'll recap at the end of this video
So you see there's a lot less that you can even see. I mean, compared to core tines, uh, which you'll see the cores all over. I'll show you that in the next one, but you, know, you can see like the, the trails, the paths, that's about it. One of the things is it kind of almost uh, dethatches a little bit when you get into like these bare areas like that. It really kind of, uh, like I said, dethatches it, kind of pulls it all up. But you can see, you know, makes the holes here, pulls just these little, little clumps of dirt soil which is what you need to do is aerate the soil, you know? Really, it doesn't matter whether you're punching holes and pulling cores or you're scooping out, you know, clumps, chunks, whatever. It's not the same shape, but it's less of it, so it breaks down in the soil easier. And you get all these holes in here so you can get all the, the soil to breathe and obviously get the seeds down in there to germinate. It still does the same effect. You could still see obviously that something's the tracks and everything it looks a little bit different um, it's not unsightly necessarily it's just different right you got these cores you know looks like goose poop all over your yard right that's always like the joke that my customers use a lot so it still does the same purpose it gets all the holes right in there pulls the cores out so that you can aerate the soil and get the seed down in there so it can germinate and grow same thing with the bare areas, does less of a dethatching job as you see all this thatch still in between here, in between all the cores and the holes and everything. So it's definitely a different look, a different end result, right? You're still getting the holes, you're still pulling cores, aerating the soil, but you got all this thatch kind of left over in between where, yeah, you can easily just rake this up, but the uh, aerating attachment over there definitely already does a lot of dethatching with it just in the nature of its scooping nature it's kind of scooping up and pulling up the thatch along the way so that's kind of a pro there mm -hmm.